Greetings, folks. Greetings. I'm Birch, and in this video, we're going to be making a template that matches the inside of any tool case or toolbox that's going to allow you to cut tool foam to fit exactly inside of that case. And I'm going to show you the one specific technique that virtually guarantees you're going to get the super tight fit that I have all the way around the edges of this case. Okay, so the case I'm using for this demo is a Milwaukee Packout Toolbox. If you don't already know, Milwaukee makes a whole series of Packout items. They're really terrific cases. This model is just called the Toolbox, but they have a large toolbox and now an extra large toolbox, some with wheels. The technique, however, can be used on any case, any toolbox. I suppose if you were trying to cut uh, planking for the inside of a small boat, you could use the technique. It really doesn't matter. The principles are the same no matter what you're working on. So now I'm going to remove the piece of foam that I've already cut and we'll get started. Okay, step one. Cut a piece of corrugated cardboard that fits approximately inside of the case that you're working on. Then you cut a hole in it. And we use that hole, hold it in place with tape. Okay, that's done. Now on to step two. I've already done some of this over here. Basically, you just take straight pieces, and I try to preserve the factory edge. They're usually straighter than what I can cut. You put a piece of tape on, you line that up at the corner, and go like that. I don't bother to try to cut something that's exactly this distance, because it's a whole lot easier to simply cut two pieces and run one into one corner do like I'm doing here and set the other one into the other corner. And when it comes to things like this, maybe I'll get lucky and this piece will fit in there. Huh. Not quite. There we go. Just about perfect. And sometimes with this, it's a lot easier to put the tape on before you stick it in place. And then just smooth that down. You know, and corners like this are the same way as I was doing before. You just kind of try to get one piece up in there. And yeah, things do build up a little bit. In these corners as you work your way around. Okay, when you get to this spot like this, it's got this undercut handle. You basically just have to prop the cardboard up a little bit so it touches that, tape it in, and then just push it down. That'll be right once we get done. For the round areas on the front here where, the, uh, where there's another latch, I only put a piece that's diagonal. You're not gonna have to worry. When I get to the part where I show you the secret to making this system work, you'll realize that you don't have to have that cut curved. Okay, so one of the most difficult pieces in any packout case is this spot right here. Now this is the small toolbox. I can't remember if the large toolbox has this down toward the bottom or not, but this is where there's a divider. And the way to deal with that is to just get this thin piece, cut it so it fits approximately in there. Well, let's see, I didn't even get the tape in the right place. Put that in there until it stops and just tape it down. When you're working right around here, you're actually working below. The template is below where the top of the foam is actually going to be, which is actually about here, whereas the template you're working on is about here, and it could actually slide underneath the latch. So you just try to get it lined up as best you can. Now I've gotten to the point where I have taped the template pieces all the way around, and we're actually going to remove this piece and use that to make the template that's then, that is then used to cut the foam, because this thing is in fact pretty flimsy once you get it out. Here's where you just pull that out. And you pull that out. And this just comes out like that. On to the next step. Just 
just like that. We trace around the outside with a sharp pencil. Okay, folks, we're getting there. But once you've traced around the template that was made with all the cut up pieces of paper, you get a straight edge and you start cutting out this second cardboard template. And you wanna watch out, most cases are nowhere near as straight as you think they are. If they were, you could probably get away with measuring and just stuffing something in there. But on pack out especially, this is angled, that's angled. You won't get by with laying a straight edge across this and just cutting. So you have to cut each edge individually and that takes a whole lot less time than you think it does. Well, I think you probably get the idea already. I'm going to cut the rest of this out, and then I'll come back. I've gotten to the point where I have cut out this entire thing. I've been careful to actually cut out all these notches and everything else. There is one spot here and here where I'm actually going to show you how to deal with those because they're in a really weird place. Now, the final step to cutting out the foam is to mark everything down. And what I've done, you know, and with black Kaizen foam, you can't see any marks on it unless you happen to have one of those white or silver magic markers. Usually all I have is this black professional Sharpie. And so if you just put tape down, you can mark right on that. It's actually easier than marking straight onto the Kaizen foam. But it helps, you want to have something that's got a little bit of thickness to the tip. And so then you go around and you simply trace... this whole thing just like this. Now I'm only doing this on a segment because I've got Kaizen foam in everything I need so I don't really want to be cutting up a new piece especially since that stuff has kind of gotten a little expensive since I first came up with this. All right so once you've done this all the way around and this is where I'm going to show you the trick that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Okay but so what you want to do to make sure this foam fits really tight you see this line's got some thickness? Cut to the outside of this line, like this. So what it does, it actually makes your template, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch oversized. And if you're in doubt, like with some of these corners, cut it too big. You can always remove a little more. But once you cut around that entire thing outside, and it helps if you use a brand new knife blade, utility knife blade, or you can use a snap knife, which is what the people who make this stuff recommend. Anything that's actually thick enough, but use something that's brand new. It's brand new, so this blade is absolutely razor sharp. If it's not, it can be a real pain in the neck to cut through any kind of foam. All right, so now what I was talking about before, I didn't actually mark this piece. I did mark this one, and I did the same thing on the other side. Now, how you deal with this, because that's so thin, you really can't cut anything out. But what you do is when you get your foam cut, you can st stick it in there part of the way, mark where you need to actually cut this. You put a piece of tape on there, mark that, and just cut a slit. But you use the case itself to mark where that particular piece of foam needs to be. And that way, the slit you make will be in the exact right place every time. Uh, pretty much the same thing can be said for these pieces here cut this notch out you just cut a slit there and then once you put this in place the foam will compress and you'll get a really nice tight fit okay so now that we've got the foam fit there are a couple of other things that you're going to need to know about doing this kind of work and that's that most equipment cases and pack out toolboxes and whatever you got, if they're molded out of plastic, they're almost certainly smaller on the bottom than they are at the top. If I wanted to put another layer of foam into this particular box, I would have to make another template. Milwaukee makes a pack out box they call the large toolbox, and I have one of those that's got three layers of 50 millimeter Kaizen foam in it. Each one of those pieces of foam had to have a separate template. That gets a little putsy after a while. Now you probably don't run into that kind of a problem with something like say a metal toolbox simply because they're made in a different manner. But almost all the plastic things are tapered slightly and I think that may have something to do with them 
being released from the mold used to make them. You know, if anybody knows about that kind of thing and you want to weigh in on the comments, by all means, do so. Now, I suppose some people are probably asking me, well, why do this with a packout case when Milwaukee already makes foam for these? And honestly, after doing this a second time, I would say, well, if the cost is acceptable to you, the pre-cut foam is a whole lot less work. I bought these packout cases before Milwaukee was actually selling foam to go in them, and so this was the only option I had. This technique as I stated at the beginning of the video, is not limited to being used on packout cases. You could use it on any case, any box, any space in a car. It works the same way. You make a nice careful template and you simply trace around the outside of that template to make your piece. You know, you could even put a solid piece like a piece of metal or a piece of wood, but you'd have to be a bit more careful about how you made your original template, but the technique itself is sound. And I hope you find it extremely useful wherever you may end up using it. Well, folks, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching the entire video. And since you're here, please watch another video and subscribe to my channel. Both those things help this channel grow, and I do appreciate it. So goodbye for now, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks.